ways, the stories of the scriptures, they're like other stories. There's adventure, action, there's plot twists, real life characters, there's tragedy, sin, death, like the fall and our fallen sinful lives. There's triumph and victory. There's rescue. There's good news. Like when Jesus was born, lived, died, and rose again to defeat sin, death, and devil for you. But, of course, the story of the scriptures is different from all other stories in two very important ways. First, the holy scriptures are holy because God inspired the authors to write his holy word and to give that to us. And secondly, unlike many of my favorite stories, maybe yours, the story of salvation and Jesus dying and rising is the true story, the greatest of all stories told. Jesus wasn't born in mythical, magical, never-never land, but in Bethlehem of Judea, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Jesus wasn't crucified in a galaxy far, far away, but under Pontius Pilate, on a particular Friday afternoon outside Jerusalem for you. And Jesus did not die and rise once upon a time like in fairy tales, but three days after his public crucifixion, he was witnessed alive again by hundreds. The story of salvation in Jesus dying and rising is true and gives us hope and comfort and meaning. It's historical and it's beautiful. So God calls us as his baptized Christians to tell this story and to be story listeners. To use God's gift of imagination when we hear and when we sing and when we read God's holy word. So here are just a few ways to go about exercising your Lutheran imagination as you read and as you hear God's word, as you are story listeners. That way you can focus your ears and attention and imagination on God's word. Try, first of all, just turning off your devices, or if you're using a device to, to read, well, just try silencing notifications or other sounds so you can listen and focus. Now, this one may sound a little odd, but Try reading God's word out loud to yourself or having it listened or read to you. You might hear things differently when it's out loud compared to silently reading by yourself. Think about asking yourself a few questions about the scripture passage or the stories that you're listening to. Is this a history book, a psalm, or a proverb? Is it the Gospels, an epistle, maybe one of Jesus' parables? What words and images or imagery, metaphors, what kind of language are the authors using? Is the Lord a mighty fortress there, a good shepherd, a warrior? Jesus sometimes is called the Lamb of God by John and others. Jesus says he's the light of the world. He's the true vine. We are his branches. Look and listen for that kind of beautiful, rich language. It's also as simple as asking yourself, in plain, simple language, what is God's word saying? And what does this mean? Not the squishy question, you know, what does it mean to me? Or how do I feel about this? But no, what does this mean? What is God saying here? What do his words say? What do they mean? And finally, when you hear God's word, ask the question. And this one kind of helps train your Lutheran imagination and helps hold it captive to the word of God. Ask yourself, in this part of the scripture, how are these words? How is God pointing me to Jesus and his dying and rising for me? After all, that is what this whole story and all the stories of Scripture is about. Christ crucified for you and for your imagination. So when it comes to hearing and reading God's word, we're baptized Christians. We are sacred story listeners. And God's gift of reason and imagination, of creativity and of critical thinking, these are held captive and enlightened by the word of God. Next time, We'll spend some time thinking about how we as a baptized Christians are not only story listeners, but storytellers called to hear and to share God's word. Until then, rest in the totally sufficient imputed righteousness of Christ.